what is prompt engineering you or your friend are talking and someone just uh, call your friend you just prompt your friend Th the reason why you prompt your friend is like you want him to respond to your prompt prompt is all about making someone perform any action by using any gesture it might be rubbing their shoulder or it might be messaging them or it might be just calling them um, whatever it might be making someone making an individual uh, or making a machine or making a computer do something action that that is what prompt in general engineering here you study entire four years or three years or five years someone also pursue master of technology master of engineering what you do is you have some knowledge with you that knowledge might be coming from your lecturers coming from youtube videos coming from your textbooks whatever the reason you have that knowledge with you you are you are ready to process that knowledge but the thing is just just because you know that knowledge just because you read those books just because you understand the concepts you will not be called as an engineer if you are able to think creatively using the knowledge that you gained in your entire course or entire syllabus then that is that is a, that is when you will be called as an engineer you need to think when you started thinking with the knowledge that you have you will be called as an engineer you don't need an engineering degree actually to become an engineer thinking based on the knowledge that you have that is what in general engineering is right so now we know what prompt engineering is making here like in terms of ai words i'm speaking making an ai tool let's suppose you all are familiar with chat gpt i will you making chat gpt performing something by thinking creatively that is what in general prompt engineering is you are talk we are talking about ai tools here we are talking about prompt engineering and the technology behind prompt engineering is generative ai generative ai is similar to artificial intelligence but there is a difference if you can see here in general when we talk about artificial intelligence artificial intelligence is like mimicking the intelligence that's it uh, if you see a movie called endiron or robo you will see the robot right the, what that robot is like it will enact as in human that's it because of that reason we are highly anticipated to watch that robot it will do everything that a human can do right it might be martial arts it might be reading books or it might be uh, i mean thinking creatively it might be anything any physical or mental or digital activity it will do but humans can also do that but the reason why robot or ai based robot is very special is because it will do everything but human cannot do everything but humans can do anything so that is the difference here we can do anything but we cannot do everything but ai or robot or i mean the ai based robots are different they can do everything if you train them properly and they have strong memory power than humans so that is the reason why we are we started depending on highly and we anticipate whenever we see robots whenever we see ai based machines we highly exaggerate and anticipate because that is the reason ai can do everything but in terms of ai to implement that ai to create an ai based on machine which can mimic human intelligence we need a technology and that the technology we that is what we call machine learning in general in general machine learning is just a implementation and ai is the output that we see there are in general two types of machine learning there is also third type called reinforcement but uh, we don't need that here supervised and unsupervised learning are two different machine learning areas even if you don't belong to coding background or computer science background but it is something that will help you machine learning like in general uh, machine learning the name itself is there right we are making machines to think we are make we are teaching machines to think that is what machine learning in general is there are two types in general first one is supervised learning uh, if you can if you can take some examples like i have a to z alphabets i train my machine to recognize all those a to z alphabets and if i ask if i show the alphabet called b and ask machine to recognize what it is it will recognize because it has been trained on alphabets a to z it knows how a looks like how b looks like so that it can classify it that is what supervised learning is it needs guidance in general uh, we can also easily create machine learning i mean supervised learning applications even the another classic example is your spam folder in gmail so like someone blocks an email from a sender let's suppose you received an email and you feel like it's uh, it's a spam or it's something a promotion kind of thing you simply click block then ultimately google will take your consideration and for if someone like if the same sender sends the mail to another one it will directly send that email to spam folder instead of inbox because google is been trained google's machine learning algorithm has been trained that 
this particular email from particular sender is marked as spam or blocked by someone. So it should be sent to the spam folder. Classification. You are telling machines here that uh, this is what it looks like or this is what you should do. You are giving instructions. So that is what in general we call supervised learning. There were many different uh, examples out there, even uh, the image recognition. Uh, you have Google Lens, right? If you show, if you scan something, some object, and it will give you the similar searches, similar Google searches. Because Google knows that if you show an Apple to Google Lens, Google's uh, your mobile camera, which is integrated with Google Lens, because it has been trained that Apple will look something like this. So it will give you similar searches. It is in general what supervised learning can do. But the thing is, supervised learning needs guidance. Now here we come to unsupervised learning. You can give some data, uh, for example, rain rainfall uh, forecasting in general you will you will see in news or in social media some like weather platforms that so okay uh, today at 5 pm there are chances that 90% of chances that it will rain today how can they say that i mean we are not showing the rainfall prediction model that uh, we are not showing the rain at uh, 5 pm today because it is not possible because it is continuous thing we have not passed the 5 am deadline by 9 uh, by like the current time but still machines can predict the reason is it has been trained with data if clouds look like this if there are winds something like this then the rainfall has been happened previously if we train machines with the data that we have then ultimately they will take decisions based uh, based on the data that it has the future decisions the other thing is online advertising i think it is something that every one of us can relate to we will in general like, i also uh, do some paid campaigns advertising campaigns how it works in the back end is we will only give some uh, some parameters like this ad should be shown to people of age groups 18 to 24 or people who speaks telugu or people who have clicked uh, similar ads previously we will only tell the algorithm to perform uh, to show ads to people who match my criteria or demographics if people are based out of vijayawada or people are based out of andhra pradesh then only you show these ads otherwise don't show this is what the instructions that in general we give to uh, advertising models and based on the inputs that A has, it will classify people and it will show it to similar audience. Even though you click the similar ad, how can the machine knows it is a similar ad? Because it, it has the data, it has the knowledge of who are the users who clicked that ad previously and it will predict that, okay, so he is a kind of user who always searches for food in Instagram. So if we, will, if we show food ads to him, ultimately there are chances that he will click and purchase. It is how machines think in unsupervised learning. So now you know like what machine learning in general is, not at least in the high level. Now what is generative AI? These two machine learning uh, types will promote artificial intelligence. If you build a supervised learning model, it will enable or it will get the artificial intelligence to that. If you try in unsupervised learning, still it will do the same. But what about generative AI? It's a mix of both. There is a small difference between AI and generative AI. The thing is, it can do the both. Like, take an example of tools like ChatGPT. You tell ChatGPT something and, uh, I mean, give you answers based on that, it will do that. Also, if you ask ChatGPT something, think based on the data that you have, it will still do that. So that is the reason why generative AI is becoming more popular these days than traditional AI. Like, you, you get this difference, right? In general, artificial intelligence rely on supervised learning and unsupervised learning which is a part of machine learning but generative AI is a mix of both it can become a supervised learning algorithm it can also become an unsupervised learning algorithm whatever it it is like it will take your input and process that like what model should use what way that we should that I should think it will decide that by its own you don't need to teach that you don't need to give any guidance so that is the reason why generative AI is popular now we uh, coming to other tools like ChatGPT or Midjourney, there were many different tools out there. They again rely on another technology called LLM. In general, uh, there are, if you ask me, like if there is an LLM, then there is SLM, short language model. Yes, there are. All the models that we use for chatbot, uh, and suppose most of the websites that you go here, every website is now maintaining a chatbot, right? Anything related to their product, it will answer even uh, Swiggy or Zomato support or even Amazon support, sometimes you will be redirected to auto chart, right? Not, a representative will not be assigned in the initial things. Only when needed, they will assign a manual executive. But the thing is, they will only answer, the chartboards will only answer 
based on the data that has been trained. And it is impossible for any of uh, those companies like Swiggy or Zomato or even Amazon, I can say, to try on everything. If you ask something irrelevant to their product or their uh, platform or their business, chatbots cannot answer. They will simply say something like, uh, I cannot understand or uh, please contact or represent you to something like this. They are all short language model. They have been trained with some documents that's it. Let's suppose I prepare a FAQ dot frequently asked questions document and I will train my chatbot. It will answer based on the document that it has. But large language models are different. They have been trained with billions of parameters, billions of such results, billions of uh, queries that you ask every day. So it can answer everything based on that. And the back end of building LLMs is natural language processing. In general, natural language processing, the, the name itself, uh, it's, it's simple. It can understand. If you build a model which can understand your language, which can understand what you are trying to say. It's what we call natural language processing. In general, most of the chatbots that you say, they are all built based on NLPs, right? So large language models, like the backend is same, NLPs. But here, let's suppose you take an example of ChatGPT. It has been trained with almost like all the text data that is there in the world until September 2021. Again, if you ask me why uh, ChatGPT will not fetch the current data, current news, because again, it is a robot, it is a knowledge machine. We read all the books in the world, let's suppose, let's treat ChatGPT as someone who reads all the books in the world, all the blogs, all the resources out there. It has knowledge. Now it can solve any problems with the knowledge that it has. I already said in the, I mean, my earlier, only when you solve anything creatively using the knowledge that you have. Similarly, prompt engineer, when you call someone a prompt engineer, he is someone who can make AI to solve anything based on the knowledge that AI has. Here you don't need a knowledge. You only need a knowledge of interacting with machines, that's it. Here the chat GPT will act as someone, I mean, in, on behalf of your place, but it will solve anything. The thing is, it is impossible for human to solve everything, right? As I said previously, we can solve anything, but not everything, but machines are different. Machines can solve everything if we provide them good resources, if you provide them decent data, decent servers, decent resources.